All right, welcome back to Sketches, Theological Sketches with Steve Thomason. We are on part two of my evolution of my theological worldview. So let's get rid of that title, and here's where we were before. Now, in 2000 to 2002, I started studying with a guy named Dr. Laurent Schultz at Bethel, and between his teaching and a whole bunch of reading, things started to change. Uh, I want to get rid of this ri bank of river of truth for a second. And uh, one of the things that I started uh, realizing was that when you look at theism, deism and atheism, uh, these three things are really all connected. They're, deism and atheism are really subsets of theism. Because theism, uh, during the modern era, the Age of Enlightenment, uh, there, there came a problem with theism. Uh, during the, the Enlightenment era, all knowledge and all truth was trying to be uh, discovered through empirical science, through observation and uh, experimentation. And, and the problem is that you, you just can't do it. You can't explain God um, through empirical science. And so as a result of that, there came what, what was known as deism, where there was a belief in God who created this mechanism called the universe, and, but didn't interact with it. There was a gap. Uh, like Thomas Jefferson was a deist, and, and our, um, the America, America was really founded on deism, which was kind of a Christianity, but not really, because God didn't interact with the physical universe. Well, over time, with the advent of like Charles Darwin and his theory of natural selection and, um, and evolution— God was just kind of written out of the, the picture altogether because now we, can, we have a natural way of explaining creation. And so deism and atheism are really subsets of theism. And they're, they're not the same when you, as pantheism and panentheism. And so to be fair, we really need to just remove these from the, the conversation. So all of a sudden, I realized that I was left with a new continuum that instead of going from pantheism to atheism with theism in the middle, now I have, uh, between the bank of extremes and the river of truth, suddenly I found myself with pantheism on one side and theism on the other side and panentheism in the middle. <clears throat> and I wasn't quite sure what to do with that, but I was thinking and thinking more about it. And I realized that... Um, there, there has to be kind of an integration between theism and pantheism. Uh, let me put a couple key words up here. I'm going to type them out uh, just so that they stand out a little bit. The first key word, it's kind of a big theological word, is immanence. Uh, immanence is a word that means uh, nearness, something that is close. And Pantheism really uh, accentuates or, or is like an intuition, human intuition, that God is everywhere, that God is spirit, and God is close by. And so pantheism is the ultimate form of imminence, that God is near, right? Well, on the other hand, you have, we'll put it on this extreme, you have transcendence hope I spelled that right It'd be embarrassing if I didn't I probably didn't that's all right transcendence transcendence means above and so when you think about theism uh, theism really emphasizes this human intuition that when you look at God God has to be bigger than all that is created God is up there and transcendent and so uh, I read this really great book by Stanley Grenz and Roger Olson called uh, Theology of the 20th Century. And in the 20th century, this has really been the debate, this tension between uh, imminence on this side and transcendence on this side. And that makes a lot of sense to me. When, and, and so I understand that theism here and pantheism uh, is really the the banks of the extremes. So what is it with this panentheism? Um, I, I never really wanted to fully embrace this, but through Laurent Schultz, he kind of hinted uh, at that a lot of 20th century theologians were saying, you know what, panentheism really seems like it might be 
the answer because it draws these two extremes together because we know that on the one hand God is spirit and is everywhere present and so but we also know on the other hand from scripture that God is transcendent and above and created all things so so panentheism seemed to be the middle ground so that is the end of part two when I come back to part three I'll, I'll tell you how I where I am today <music>